Hey everybody, thanks for checking in and today we're going to take a look at 58mm lenses and I'm going to show you how to buy a good one like this from around about 40 to 50 pounds. So stay tuned. So welcome everyone and yes, today we're looking at 58 millimeter lenses and we're going to have a look at how they work on full frame cameras like this one, the Sony a7 that I've got here. I've got the Minolta PF 58 mil on here at the moment. And we're also going to look at how they work on APS-C cameras like this one. I've got this one, uh, this Helios 44 on the X-T3 here. And we're also going to have a report from our outside reporter, Royston Hertfordshire. Harrington the fourth I think that's his name and he's been out all the way to Avebury with this lens he's been to Avebury in Wiltshire with the Konica 57 millimeter f 1.4 so he's there at the moment gambling and skipping with the lambs in the meadows and uh, hopefully taking some pictures as well but we're going to come back to that very soon so three lenses to look at today. We've got the Konica, we've got the Minolta, and we've also got the Helios 44 58mm f2. But we've got variations of the Helios to look at as well. There are quite a few variations of the Helios 44 that were made. And so I'm going to go through those variations with you and talk about prices and so on. Those are the lenses we're looking at today. So why shoot a 58 mil? Well, the first thing is they give you a little more reach. A 50 mil, I find often can be a little bit short, especially if I'm on the street, especially if, you know, I need that little bit more length. I just need to see that little bit farther and I don't want to do too much cropping a 58 can be really useful. Eight millimeters doesn't sound like a lot of difference, but it does make a difference in practice. You would be surprised uh, what a difference that actually makes while you're out shooting. And of course, that's on full frame. If you put one of these lenses on an APS-C camera, then the effective focal length. Please do note that word effective. There's no magical change. The lens is still the same, but on a smaller APS-C sensor, the effective focal length is about 90 millimeters. So that gives it a really good reach and it does become a short telephoto lens uh, on APS-C. So, you know, I, I've, I find them really useful actually on a smaller sensor camera. If you do want that bit of reach, you don't have to use a great big long lens like a 90 mil would be. You can use a 58 and get an effective 90. So that's really useful. The other reason to use a 58 mil is that it gives you that little bit more blur. So the longer the focal length with any lens, the more inherent blur it has and the more blur it's capable of producing in the background of a shot. So that means that uh, if you're close up, you're going to get that bit more background blur. If you're a blur junkie or if you're on the street and you're shooting a subject a moderate distance away, you have a better chance of getting some separation with a 58 than you do with a 50. The first 58 I used, and I used this for many, many years, was this very lens. It's got a bit of a fault. You can probably see the aperture blades have gone a little bit awry. I must admit that was my fault. I was cleaning it and uh, I just, just happened to catch one of the blades and knocked it off its perch. So I'll have to come back and fix that. But this was the very lens that I used for years and years and years. It was one of my first vintage lenses. This is the Helios 44 2. It's an F2 58mm lens and it comes in many, 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 many guises. It was made, 
gosh, I don't know. Production has not long ceased of this lens. There may be even be a lens based on this in production somewhere by KMZ. I don't know, but it was made for about 40 or 50 years. It's a direct copy of the Zeiss Biotar. I had a copy of the Biotar and I found the Helios better. I found a nice version of the Helios better than my version, uh, my 10 blade version of the Biotar. So this is a direct copy of that lens and it's a very nice one. The nicest one, however, is not this one. You can see that this one has this manufacturing symbol here. And I think that is, I think that's either the Belomo or the Goms manufacturing symbol. These are not the best, in my opinion, variety of Helios 44. If you want a good Helios 44, you need to get one made by KMZ, right? So it needs to say made by KMZ on that aperture ring. The lens is made in other factories like Belomo and Goms. They're all right, they're fine, but the coating is not as nice. And in fact, even the KMZ coating got less good over time. The best Helios 44 you can buy is this one. This is the 13 blade version. Let me just show you the blades. It's got 13 aperture blades. You can probably just about see them in there. Um, and this is the early version. The early versions are all silver and they all have an M39 mount, not an M42 mount, not an L39 mount, but an M39 mount, all these silver versions. There are eight blade versions of these silver ones as well, again, made by KMZ. Those are good too. They've got the nice coatings on there. I don't know if you can just see the, just a tinge of purple coatings on there. Those are the best coatings to look for in a Helios 44. Coatings did get less good over time, even on the KMZ lenses, but if you stick to KMZ, you will almost certainly get a nice lens. The others are not quite so nice. Prices, these can be very cheap. Everything's gone up on Buy It Now, right? So one of these on Buy It Now will probably be around 40 to 50 pounds. If you buy one on auction, you'll get one for 30 to 40 pounds. If you buy a later KMZ version, that is the black version, what you're looking for is a black version with all white markings, not the colored markings like this one has. You're looking for a black version with all white markings. Those go for around 40 to 50 pounds on auction, probably more on buy it now. The earlier lenses, the 13 blade ones like this one, these are the most prized and the most sought after. These can go on buy it now for around 100 to 150 pounds, but I bought this one on auction two years ago for 30 pounds. Nobody wanted it. So the key is patience and persistence you will get things cheaper but those are the buy it now prices for these lenses they're beautiful lenses i've shot this one recently on my xt3 and i stopped it down to f 2.8 and it's just lovely the images it makes are absolutely gorgeous blur is beautiful it's plenty sharp enough it's got beautiful beautiful colors and it's got lovely lovely blur with a bit of the swirly stuff in the background, if you like that. Personally, I like it. I know it's not everyone, everyone's cup of tea, but this being a Zeiss-derived lens has that swirl in the background, which uh, I and many others like so much. So price range for these lenses, Helios 44, from about £30 to about £130, £150. Take your pick. You pay your money and you take your choice. I would suggest a KMZ black body version for around about 40 to 50 pounds is the sweet spot in terms of cost and quality. That's the one to go for. A beautiful lens won't let you down. Right, now it's over to our outside broadcast man. What was his name? Hetherington, Barrington, Socrates, 
the fifth over to Avebury. Let's see what he's managed to do with the Minolta PF 58 mil 1.4. Before we go to Barrington or Hetherington or whatever his name turns out to be, I'll tell you a little bit about this lens. This is the earliest, I think, of the Minolta PF 1.4 lenses. There were quite a few of these allegedly improving in quality over the years. I'm entirely happy with this one. I bought it for £30. Again, nobody seemed to want it. It came with this Minolta, whoop, Minolta filter, nice chrome filter on the front there. But the lens itself it's beaut is beautiful. I believe this is a radioactive lens, so I'm not going to stare down the barrel. Um, caution should be exercised, but not too much caution and not to the point that you fear them. But just to let you know, this is radioactive um, if you're not keen on that. I shot this at f2. I think I also stopped it down, or rather our outside man shot it at f2 and stopped it down to f2.8 uh, occasionally. And at those apertures, it produces beautifully sharp images with very, very, very nice colours. I do love the colours this lens makes. The jury's out as to whether this early 13 blade Helios 44 makes nicer colours, but certainly, I think the Helios is warmer actually, certainly these are very, very beautiful colours indeed from this Minolta lens. It's just what Minolta is famous for, and rightly so. They're just outstanding. And stop down to F2, it's a really nice sharp lens. Cost for one of these? I don't know, I paid £30. Everything's gone up, hasn't it? Buy it now, 80 to 100, with patience, 60 to 70, possibly less. I reckon that's a real bargain. And this is a lovely, lovely lens. It's a bit heavy, it's all metal, no plastic, and it's very, very substantial, more substantial than the Helios, which is lighter. But don't forget, this lens opens up one stop wider, and it was a bit of a marvel in its day in the late 60s because it was a very wide lens for its time. You could get lots of those photons onto your film and you could get an image, even though it is soft wide open, it's not too soft, but it is noticeably soft. Uh, much better stop down to F2. All right, let's now go over to Hetherington Barrington Roller Skates, the fourth. Hello everyone, we're outdoors testing 58mm lenses and we've come to, where have we come to? Avebury. 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 Mrs Z tells me we've come to Avebury and to prove it here we are in Avebury and uh, I've come here to, uh, well partly to see what this 58mm lens can do. I've got Minolta with me just at the moment. Minolta PF and also to have a look at these old stones and go and have these old stones and see if I can see if we can get some interesting shots of them. My goodness these things have stood here for 5,000 years. What was going on with the people who made them? What were they thinking? It was clearly part of a sacred landscape of some sort. So the challenge for me here today is, can I turn this inspiration into some sort of usable shots? Can I capture the feel of this place? Can I bring what this place is into an image? So. That's what I'm going to try now. Just look at this thing behind me. What can that be all about? Can we capture that? Can we make that? Can we find the feel that we get when we see that stone? It does have a certain resonance even today. Let's see if we can do that. This Minolta PF 58mm 
is performing very very nicely so far I've got it stopped down a bit today I'm not using it fully open today I'm using it around f2 2.8 f4 to try and bring up a little bit of sharpness and just get rid of the compromises and uh, you know optical flaws that creep in at f1.4 just to see what it can really do and so far it's impressed it's it's very sharp I like the colors it's got a real feeling of quality unlike the Helios actually the Helios doesn't have that same feeling of quality that this Minolta lens has um, I think it makes at least equally nice images actually it is a very very nice lens the Helios 13 blade but any KMZ made Helios 44 is gonna be a really nice lens I would possibly avoid the other versions they're not coated as nicely they're not made as nicely um, and that's the result of experience so in my experience KMZ made the best uh, Helios 44s but you know with these vintage lenses what we're looking at really is not absolute quality and uh, you know where the where the quality finally goes but I mean we are looking at quality obviously but we're, we're because they're vintage lenses we're looking more at things like character and flavor and how the thing feels the Helios of course is an f2 it's not an f1.4 thank you it's not an f1.4 lens and so it's not going to get a soft when you open it up to its fullest extent because of course it's f2 and not f1.4 but I think it gives a similar image to the uh, other two lenses perhaps not quite as soft fully open so thank you outside reporting man for that outside report on the Minolta PF uh, 58 mil f1.8 now then I'd like to look at another lens which I've lost no I haven't it's here Final lens for today is the Konica 58, 57 mil f1.4, but this is an honorary 58. I don't know why they marked it 57 when everybody was marking theirs 58, but there you go. So the Konica Hexanon AR 57 f1.4. Well, I bought this lens at Photographica a couple of years ago. Um, in the uh, video that we made, you can see me buying it. I paid 70 pounds for it, or maybe it was 75. And I was really pleased to find this at the time. I was very, very happy to find this because I love Konica lenses and I've used a lot of them. My favorite being the 40 mil. Uh, that's a beautiful F 1.8 lens for the street. But the Konica lenses I'd used prior to getting this one were from the later generation and when I shot this one I've got to say I was a bit disappointed I had expected a little bit more because it's not as good quite wide open as its later counterparts its later Konica counterparts the next generation on but this lens is what it is it's a lovely 57 mil lens with beautiful background blur and beautiful colors you do get i'm glad to say the konica colors with this lens konica are famous for colors and i just love what this lens does with color it's kind of cool ish which is a palette a color palette that i really like i do like a nice cool fresh refreshing color palette and this lens has it if you want a sharp image, if you like your sharpness, stop it down to f2 because it won't give you anything really approaching sharp, certainly by modern standards, before that. f1.4 is for character in this lens and it does have plenty of vintage character in fact. The Minolta is the same. The Minolta PF has loads of vintage character opened up wide to f1.4. And the Helios 2 come to that. So this is a character lens and it's beautiful for that. 
it's really good for portraits also and it's got all of that sort of vintage charm if you open it up fully it's got loads of character personality flair charm what others might call optical flaws but here at xenography we know better than to call them optical flaws because they amount to an interesting image sharpness as somebody once observed is a bourgeois concept and while a nice sharp image is nice and sharp who says that that's better than an image that isn't quite as sharp this lens will give you a lovely characterful image wide open a little bit soft a little bit of bloom and you do have to shade it from stray light because contrast will really drop off and it doesn't too much like diffuse light either when I was shooting with this the other day in diffuse light I mean no lens is at its best in diffuse light but I, I thought this one bloomed a little bit and uh, showed a few other flaws that uh, you know can be considered imperfections but also make a really interesting image so that is what's great about this lens i paid 70 pounds for this one you can get them very easily at this price if you're patient probably less i bought from a dealer uh, and he wouldn't haggle so uh, i had to pay top whack that he wanted but you can probably get one for less than that if you're patient again it's persistence and patience that pays off don't buy the first one that you see you wouldn't buy the first car that you see or anything else so don't buy the first one of these that you see at top price be a little bit patient be a little bit persistent and you'll find the lens you want and this is one that's well worth waiting for so there we are three lovely 58 mil lenses and they are all lovely which comes out on top honestly right I really like what the Konica can do it's a beautiful lens it's got loads of character and it's got beautiful color as well just outstanding and it's the same with the Minolta this is a gorgeous gorgeous lens a really beautiful optic open it up and it blooms and you get wacky blur and all sorts of effects that add up to a really beautiful character stop it down it gives you sharpness and beautiful colors but the pick of the bunch and the one i'd take out to shoot and the one i take out to shoot most often is the humble helios 44 now i use that word humble guardedly because this is a very fine optic it's a direct copy of the zeiss biotar and the early ones are nicest um, but you can get really nice ones up to the late 70s made by kmz for about 50 pounds it doesn't open up to f1.4 it is only an f2 lens but it's almost as sharp at f2 as the other lenses are at f2 and if you stop it down to 2.8 it is at least as sharp as they are at f2 and 2.8 and possibly sharper colors are just exquisite things it does with light are exquisite and the blur for me anyway is exquisite too so the pick of the bunch for me is the helios 44 so that's it from me for today i do hope you've enjoyed this episode and that it's been of some use if you've enjoyed it please do subscribe like and hit the bell and that helps the channel to grow and we can bring you more videos that you love many many thanks to subscribers for all of your support whether you've been a subscriber and aren't a subscriber anymore whether you've been a subscriber from the start or whether you've just joined many many thanks and many many thanks also go to patrons for your support whether you've been an, a patron from the start whether you've just joined us or whether you've you've been with us for a while and you've decided to leave many many thanks to everybody i really really appreciate all your support and that is a heartfelt thanks so that's it from me for now if you like the content on this channel please do consider becoming a patron over at www.patreon 
facebook.com forward slash scenography and if you're not doing anything too much next week please do join me for another spot of scenography thanks for watching cheerio all <laughs>